You know, it's his, you know, it's his plan to pour out of his spirit all over this whole city. Amen. And so we're, we're grateful, thankful that we get to be a part of something so awesome. Amen. God's such a great God. Do you know he loves you? You know, he thinks you're awesome. Amen. So tonight, some of you here and you've come expecting others, you came just to see what was going to happen. Some of you don't even know why you came, but we (laughs) we praise God that you're here. Amen. And we're expecting the Lord to do great things with you and and for you. Just open up your hearts. Amen. And you say, is that necessary? Is it necessary for us to open up our hearts for God to do something for us? Well, no. He might just take a hankering to do something for you and get you anyhow. Amen. You know, some people get it because they want it. And some people get it because they prayed about it. Really asked God for it. And some people get it because they're sitting in the wrong seat. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Or the right one, ever how you want to look at it. <laughs> Glory to God. But uh, it's much easier if we, if we don't resist Him, if we just allow Him to do what He wants to do in us. You know, if we'll, if we'll, if we'll tear down all those... You know, I don't know what it is about people. We naturally resistant to the ways of God and to the move of God. People naturally resistant uh, because of their sinful nature, I reckon. But, uh, but if we'll get out there and we'll position ourselves, then we'll be assured that he'll, he'll do what he wants to do. Amen. Praise God. Well, we want to welcome all of you today. If you're here visiting, we, how many of you here visiting tonight for the first time? Wonderful. Amen. Some of you came from a long way to visit, didn't you? Where'd you guys come from? Tennessee. Tennessee. Amen. (laughs) Praise God. Can anybody beat that? Anybody beat Tennessee? I came from Oklahoma, so I think think I'm the only one that's beat you in distance. Praise God. It's great to have you guys. They told me the Holy Ghost jumped on you and said, go. So you're here. Amen. Praise God. There's some folks here last night from Anderson. They came a long way, and we praise God for that. And there have been many people that have come from long distances to be in these meetings. And I'm encouraging people to come. I tell you, the Holy Spirit is working, and He's He's doing some awesome stuff. And and uh, I don't believe He's I don't believe He's through. Amen. We certainly want to welcome those who are uh, ministers here today. Uh, Pastor uh, Parrish is here, of course. Pastor King is here. Brother Kendall is here, and and we have some other pastors here as well. Pastor Pat is here. Amen. Brother, brother, introduce yourself. Just stand up. Tell us where you're from, what your ministry is. Wonderful. And you, you minister to truckers. Is that right? And well, anyone who'll stand. Amen. Anyone who'll stand in front of you. Praise God. It's good to have you, bro. I thank God for you. Brother, stand and introduce yourself. It's wonderful to have you tonight, brother. Amen. (laughs) Praise God. Brother, why don't you stand and introduce yourself? You're becoming a fixture. But uh, yeah, I'm looking at you, bro. Amen. (laughs) Cambridge City. Amen. It's good to have you. And brother Dan, why don't you stand and introduce yourself? <laughs> Amen. Praise God. So it's good to have you, bro. Amen. I thank God for you. Is there anyone else here that is in ministry that I that I uh, didn't uh, uh, didn't uh, uh, you in you in full time ministry? Mindy, you in full time ministry? Faith Christian Fellowship. Is that a church? You? It's a mission. Amen. Wonderful. Thank God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. It's so good to have everyone here tonight. And, and I'm grateful to the Lord for all of us coming together. You know, God's doing some great things here in the city of Richmond. But uh, more so than here in the city of Richmond, God's doing things all over the United States. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. So uh, let's, let's prepare to receive the offering. Now, uh, We've been, we've been, uh, of course, I've been encouraging people concerning finance and supernatural increase. Back in 1999, the Lord had spoken to me, well, it was 19, actually 1998. 
Um, I shared, I think I shared that. I'll share it briefly. In 1998, the Lord um, started dealing with me uh, concerning um, teaching people, teaching his people about finances. And uh, it wasn't something that I wanted to do. It wasn't something that I really desired to talk about. Uh, in fact, at one time in, in my ministry, in the, in, the, in the beginning, like most people, I traveled around and I, I was doing itinerant preaching and doing what uh, traditionally evangelists do, preaching here, preaching there, going and a week here, a week there, a week over here, a week over there. I just go different places. And um, while, I was, while I was doing that, I believed I was doing the will of God. And um, do you know sometimes we, we believe that we're, we're doing the will of God and, and, and at that moment, right at that moment, we, uh, at times we are because we're walking in the light that we have. And how many of you know God will bless us as long as we walk in all the light that he's given us, he'll bless us. But uh, the minute he, he begins to reveal something more and he gives us more light to walk in, it's our responsibility to walk in that light. Amen. And uh, it's, it's amazing how the blessing seems to increase and his grace and his favor seems to increase the more light that you walk in. Isn't that awesome? So and, uh, before, before 1998, uh, well, in the beginning of my ministry, I struggled just to make it financially. Uh, most of the places I went to, we didn't make it too good. I'd fast every other day involuntarily because <laughs> I just didn't have the money to eat every day. So I'd fast every other day involuntarily. Of course, you had people on both sides of the fence. In fact, I, th I don't think some people really knew which side of the fence to get on, so they were on both sides of the fence. Some of them would say to me, well, if you were doing the will of God, you'd be blessed. And then those same people, when the blessing of God began to come, said, well, you're just doing it for the money. So they couldn't make up their minds whether I ought to be blessed or not. But, but during that, that, those lean times, it, it was a real struggle. The reason why I struggled financially is because I'd never got a revelation on what God's word said. You know, some, I think most people in the body of Christ, especially in our generation, most people, their, their secondary reading is the Bible. Most people, the first thing they read is books uh, about what other people say. Some people never give God the opportunity to give them a revelation for themselves. Too many people walking according to someone else's revelation. In fact, I preached a message during revival. In the body of Christ, we got a whole lot of echoes and just a few voices. You can't be a voice for God unless you, you're determined you're going to hear from Him yourself. And someone that speaks God's Word with a revelation or with, with uh, you know, God, uh, with, uh, God having put on display some truth in their spirit, when you preach God's Word with faith and revelation then you become a voice. But until you get your own revelation, you're just an echo. You're just parroting or mimicking or parakeeting what you've heard somebody else say. And unfortunately, most people in the, in the body, including preachers, most people in the body of Christ, they're just echoing and mimicking what other people have said. And so um, I, I don't guess that I, I got the memo that that was how things were supposed to be. When I first got born again, I read several books by uh, Kenneth Hagin, but most of the time I spent on my knees in an effort to get a revelation of his word for myself. I, I don't know. For some reason, I thought that might be important that I get a revelation for myself of what his word said. And one of the things that he straightened me out on right quick was he, he said, he, in fact, he said it to me this way. He said, I never intended for you to be broke. And that was a revelation to me. Because in the church that, uh, I, was in the, I was part of the Mennonite church. In that Mennonite church, they, they taught broke, being broke. <laughs> in fact, somehow or another, holiness and poverty went together. And, and, and I searched the scripture and I found some places where you might, you might could twist the word and make it say that. But I never found any, anything that, that uh, I met, never found anything in the word that was concrete uh, concerning poverty and holiness being well, that if you were pop in poverty, you were holy. Just like you can't find in Scripture to where if you're rich, uh, you're godly. In fact, the Bible teaches the opposite on both of those things. Poverty doesn't equal holiness, and, and, uh, and being rich doesn't equal godliness. Amen. Y'all hear that? But I did, found, found, I did find out that what his word said was, 
he intended to bless his people. And so I began to apply his word to my life. And long story short, um, God began to do what his word said. And he began to bless us big time. And so we began to be blessed big time. And for many, for many years after, after I'd gotten that revelation, I walked in his blessing and, and uh, we, uh, we were able to do the work of the ministry. Um, I, I, and I told, I've told people this for, for many years now. I mean, since maybe three or four years after I got born again. I've never had to, I've never had to preach a meeting in order, to, in order, to, uh, in order to, to, to feed my family or to feed myself. I don't, I don't, um, I, 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 well, for example, I'm not here because I have to fill up a bank account. In fact, I could come here and preach and hang out here with you all. And if we never, if, if, well, say, say people got ugly and they're like, we don't like what you're saying. We're not giving you no money. I'm like, keep your money. I don't care. Because he's, because he's, ble- he's blessed us. He's blessed us in a manner where. We can go anywhere and say anything he asks us to say and not concern ourselves with, do you know I never go home wringing my hands wondering, I hope, I hope the offering comes in. My God, I hope it comes in. Because when, when, you, when you get over there and you begin to walk in the blessing of his word, then you don't have to concern yourself with those things. Do you know how liberating that is? Do you know how many preachers th- there are that have never had the liberty and the freedom to be able to preach anything that God told them, regardless of how people would respond to it? Most of them for fear that people might hold out on them and try to starve them to death. And if you don't believe that happens in church, you're sadly mistaken. Amen. Some of you have participated in that thinking it was godly and it wasn't. Hallelujah. Amen. I have already started preaching, by the way. Amen. (laughs) But in but in in 1998, the Lord, though of course the Lord had been blessing us. In 1998, the Lord spoke to me and He said, He said, "Son," I was praying. He said, "Son," He said, "When I told you to go minister to the sick, He says you went and you laid hands on the sick, and He says, and you were obedient, and He said you did good." And I was like, "Praise God, Hallelujah, Amen." I'd never had the Lord tell me I had done good. I was like, amen. Boy, I was like, thank you, Jesus. And he's like, and when I told you, he said to go, he said, when I told you to go and preach revival, he said, you went and you preached revival. He said, and you did good. I was like, yes. And then he said, and when I told you to prophesy, he said, you went and you prophesied. And he said, and you did good. And I was like, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Boy, I was, I was like, he just must want to bless me. And then he said this, he said, he said, but when I anointed you to prosper <laughs> and, I, and I blessed you with an anointing to prosper, he said, you kept that for yourself. He said, you didn't tell my people nothing about it. He said, you never shared it with them. He said, if you don't begin to obey me and, and, and begin to teach my people and impart to my people supernatural increase, he says, yours is going away. And I was like, but Lord, I don't, I don't, I don't want to teach that. You know, I, I'll be honest with you. I don't want to teach that. Because when you teach on that, people question your motives. Some of you questioning my motive right now. You don't even know me. You questioning my motive right now. Because we're leery, man. We're, listen, people, are in body, people in the body of Christ, they're leery. Amen. And that was the very thing that I didn't want to have happen. I didn't want people shutting me off because I thought, well, Lord, if I teach on finances, that, is, that to me is of such little importance, then they'll miss the important things or the things that we consider to be more important. Are you all hearing this? <clears throat> you know what? He didn't really give a rip what I thought. Do you know God loves you? <laughs> Do you know that God... God loves you, and he, he just thinks you're the bomb, but he don't really value your opinion. He don't care what you think. All that's important to him is what he said, and that we do what he said, amen, according to his word. And so <laughs> I was like, well, Lord, I don't want to do that because I, I don't want, I didn't, here's, here's what it was. I didn't want to suffer the persecution. And so... I was like, I'll pray about it, Lord. I'm gonna, you know, just gonna pray and and 
I'm going to seek your face, and we'll just see how it all works out. <laughs> that was in the summer of 1998. By December of 1998, my checking account for the ministry had gone down to 100 bucks. We needed to meet a budget of over $10,000 the following month. And I don't know if you know anything, but typical, well, uh, more traditional, typical um, evangelists, they don't have meetings during December or, or during the holiday season or in the beginning of the year. And I, that's how I was doing meetings back in that time. So not anymore. I mean, now we go through Christmas and Thanksgiving. We just jack everything up. Amen. But, uh, but I was like, you know, when you got a hundred bucks in the bank and you got to continue doing what God told you to do, that you get serious. And I was like, Lord, I'm serious. This ain't right. What do we got to do to fix this? He said, I told you. He said, you need to, he said, I, I never gave you none of this for yourself. Do you know God don't anoint us for us? He don't anoint us for our own pleasure or for our own desires or our own deal. He don't, he don't put his hand on us so we can go out and get business cards and, and, uh, and talk to everybody about who we are and what we be. He anoints us for the purpose of what we talked about last night, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the, to equip the saints to do the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of, of Christ, till we all come in the unity of faith, the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man. Amen. That's, that's what he expects from us. And so... Um, I was like, I'll, 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 I'll do whatever you tell me to do. He's like, teach my people. So you tell, I don't teach with, I don't teach with notes. I, I teach and preach and have been for years. Just, we, 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 I'm trying to tune into what the Holy Spirit is saying. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. And, um, and then just, just declare what he's saying. Amen. And so, uh, I called up a friend of mine. I was supposed to preach for him in January of the following year. And I told him what. The Lord had told me, and I said, I need to come and preach. I said, but I don't think I can preach on anything but, but finances. And, and he was real nervous. Even though we're buddies, he's like, he had a, he'd had a bad experience with another an evangelist. And, and he's like, he said, you're my friend. He said, and I trust you. And if you, you heard from God, he said, I'm open to it. You just come on. And I was like, okay. And I did. I went and I preached in his church. And I'll just tell you what happened. Normally, I think in that church... A normal offering for us would have been, oh, you know, a couple thousand dollars or something. Um, I wouldn't receive, to, so that people wouldn't question. And then we'll receive the offer. I'm just going to tell you the story because I think it's important for you to know. Uh, that week, we were there from Sunday to Wednesday. And I was so concerned about people questioning my motive that I said, we're not going to receive an offering all week. We'll receive one offering on Wednesday and that's it. Because I don't want you to question my motive. And everyone was like, that's weird, you know. But I think they were happy about it, too. They were like, all right, go ahead, amen. We'll give one time. And so I got up to preach. And when I got up to preach and to teach on the subject, man, this stuff came rolling out of my spirit. I had never even heard some of it before my, myself. And so I got the series. I got the tapes, man. I was like, give me the tapes. I need to hear that again. Man, it was good. But it was all the stuff that I had been practicing, but never had communicated out of my mouth and so by the second by the second uh, service Sunday night people were they could tell there was something different about it and so on on Monday I had people come and try to give me money like you know some people do and I was like no I'm not I'm not receiving that right now we're not doing that and then some people get mad because I wouldn't receive their money what a change huh there's people in church getting mad because I wouldn't take any of the money they was trying to give me I was like, no, it's, it's, that's for Wednesday. Well, what if I can't be here Wednesday? Well, then you won't give. <sighs> How dare you? <laughs> well, get off your bumper and come to church Wednesday then. You know what I'm saying? And so on Wednesday night, we received the offering. And that offering, oh, it was, it was, it was, I think it was nearly $20,000 that week. I mean, it was, just way, it was just way crazy. And so in the first three months of the year of 1999, we met uh, for, we, we met, in the first four, in the, well, I'll just skip it. First five months, we met four years worth of budget. And every church we went to was, was just blowing up. I mean, supernatural increase was blowing up all over the place. And so that's why I have continued to teach and to encourage people to receive instruction and not just instruction, but, but get over there in the flow of the Holy Ghost. 
concerning finance and supernatural increase. Because as much as we need to hear God's word on the subject, we need to get over there and receive that impartation of the Holy Spirit uh, and receive an anointing to prosper in our lives so that we can function on the level of finance that God wants us to function in. Amen. And so it becomes difficult during these times of revival to get over there in that place where we get over there in that flow and everyone receive that flow. But it's up to us. Those of you that have heard the instruction and heard the teaching and been a part of this, of course, tomorrow morning we'll have a a class that we've set aside specifically for talking about supernatural increase in finances. And so if you can come in the morning at 1030 in the morning over at Bethesda, it'll be a blessing to you. Amen. But but I want to encourage you all here tonight. Uh, Most of what we've been doing is encouraging people to sow and to give, and I want to encourage you to do that. But I also want to encourage you to open up your heart to receive what the Holy Spirit desires to impart to you concerning finance and supernatural increase. Do you know God's not going to force himself on you in any area. We We have to be willing to participate when it comes to walking in the fullness of his blessing. Now he might knock you down because you got in his way. Amen. Remember I said you can get it because you're sitting in the wrong seat? He might knock you down because you got in your way. And you may get a sympathy 20 because you got around someone that was flowing in the Holy Ghost and and getting over there in supernatural increase. But if you're really going to get over there and prosper in the way God intends for you to, then you're going to have to, on purpose, determine to align yourself with His Word and get over there in the Holy Ghost. Say, get in the Holy Ghost. Say it again. Say it again. Now, see, some people believe that they are in the Holy Ghost. But there's no evidence in their life to prove it. Amen. So when you get over there in the the Holy Ghost, you get over there in the Spirit in any area, there'll be results. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So, now, where are you fellas at that are going to receive this offering? And and ladies, and or ladies. Wonderful. Come forward. I'm done. Praise God. Hallelujah. I just want you to know... That I, 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 don't, I don't say that. I'll, I'll say it. <clears throat> Do you know my least favorite thing to talk about is finances? Now, see some people like, man, but it seems like you enjoy it so much. Well, it's, it's his word. But there's a, there's a struggle that goes on in, in, within myself every time, I, every time I have to preach or teach on it because it, it's not what I prefer. But you know what? It's not about what I prefer. It's about what he prefers. Amen. Too many of us trying to do what we prefer. Are you all hearing me today? Many of us trying to do what we prefer. And we need to do what he prefers. Amen. So I want you to prepare an offering. I want you to, uh, if you're writing a check, make your check to the uh, First Assembly of God. Everything that comes in to these, uh, this offering here goes to help us to continue to do all that he's commanded us to do. But I want to encourage you to be, uh, to be a cheerful giver. Turn to someone and tell them, be a, smile and tell them, be a cheerful giver. Amen. Be a cheerful giver. Praise God. If you're giving cash uh, and you need a record of your giving, then make sure that you break out an envelope and don't just put your money in there. Put your information on it. Write it legibly so that they can make a record of it. And um, amen. But give generously. Praise God. And expect a harvest and expect a return on every one of your seeds sown. How many of you excited about it? Amen. Lift your offering. Let's pray over it. Father, we thank you and we praise you for the ability you've given to us to give to you. Lord, as we sow and as we give, we're expecting what your word declares. God, we're not trying to convince you to do anything for us. Your word already says that you want to. It wasn't our idea. It was your idea. And so, God, we align ourselves with your ideas. We align ourselves with your thinking. We align ourselves, God, with what you've declared out of your own mouth unto us. And we say, Lord, that as we give, it is given unto us. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Men are giving into our bosom with the same measure that we're giving out. It's being measured unto us again. God, we're giving cheerfully. And because we're giving cheerfully, you're causing all grace to abound toward us. Amen. And we have all sufficiency in all things at all times. Uh, so that at all times we can, we can give generously. And out of, an, uh, uh, out, of an, out of an abundance of finance and out of an abundance of joy. And Lord, 
I thank you and I praise you that you are overtaking and overrunning this region with believers that are not only full of your spirit, Lord, but they're full of the resources capable of being able to fulfill every vision and every dream that you plan in the hearts of everyone. And Father, we rejoice today that we are a part in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. Amen. Go ahead, fellas, and receive the offering in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. 